Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video series, we're going to learn how to record and produce your band in Reaper. And this is part six of that series. Next, we're going to work on the bass guitar. We'll plug the guitar into our interface. Now, if your interface has a quarter inch input, you can just plug it directly in. The interface I'm using has XLR, which is mic inputs. So for me, I'm going to plug the bass guitar into a direct box and plug the output of the direct box into my interface. So I could use that mic input. Or we could plug the bass into a bass amp, put a mic on that, and record that signal into our interface. Or we could do both, the DI and the amp at the same time. But for this video, I'm just going to record the bass as a DI. So it's plugged in directly into our interface. And if you remember, we chose input 9 for the bass. Now let's see how this sounds in Reaper. We'll take these tracks out of record by just going to the bass, hold on control on the PC, command on the Mac, click it once, all the tracks go out of record. We can put the bass in record right here. We'll bring up our preamp and have the bass player play. And as we can see, it's too loud. It's almost above minus six. Again, we want to keep it between minus 18 and minus 12. So let's bring down our preamp a bit. And let's hear that. Much better. It's between minus 18 and minus 12. So that's a good level coming in. Now let's add some compression to it to keep the performance more controlled, where the quiet notes and the louder notes are not that different. So it'll be easier to hear in the mix. So let's go to the effects right here. And once again, we'll go to the Reaper compressor, Rear Comp. We'll start off with four to one as our compression ratio. Four to one's a good starting point. Then we could bring the threshold down to compress the bass. And we could adjust the attack and the release to really fine tune the compression. If we make the attack faster, it's going to grab all the notes very quickly, but it might squish the transients a bit, while a slower attack will let them through. And the release will decide how quickly it reacts from one note to the other. That feels pretty good right there. Now we'll add an EQ after the compressor. Just double click here, go to the re-EQ, and we can start with a low shelving EQ right here. Once again, it's going to boost from this frequency all the way down. So it's going to sound more subtle and also bigger, but not as peaky. Just a bit, at about 210 hertz. Now to bring up the attack or the finger noise, we can use a peaking EQ or a parametric EQ in the upper mid-range. And that gives some clarity to the bass. Although I don't think we need that much on this track. Before, now let's bypass the whole channel right here. It's a subtle difference, but I prefer it. And remember, we're only adding these effects for monitoring. 
it doesn't affect what we're actually recording. So we can always change this later on. Now in the next video, we're gonna work on the acoustic guitar. Let's go. Oh! <laughs>